Welcome to Keyframers, the animated collaborative coding live stream where we bring imaginative user interfaces to life. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw, but you may know me as at Shashaw. And I'm your host, David Corsid, also known as at David K. Piano. And together we are coding compadres, animation amigos, boolean buddies, and keyframe companions. Yeah, so we'll be creating an animation, as always, from scratch live using HTML and CSS. No JavaScript today. Really? The JavaScript's just not working. Really? Oh. Uh, everywhere. It's just, yep. JavaScript is down, everyone. You heard it. Yeah, they shut down the JavaScript. Oh, yep. Man, I knew this would happen one day. What are we going to do for jobs, David? I don't know, but we've prepared. <laughs> This is what our training has been for. This is what everything you know? has been working together towards. Yeah, imagine a web apocalypse, no JavaScript, right? Yeah. Everything must be done in HTML and CSS, just like the good old days, 1992 or what? No, 1996. I don't know. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, so yeah, Keyframers is made possible by your support. Uh, you can get special shout outs and uh, other things by pledging on Patreon or subscribing here on Twitch or uh, however you choose to support us, uh, just by hanging mm -hmm. out with us. Uh, we always enjoy having you guys in the, in the chat. Yeah. So, uh, we're also happy to answer any questions that you may have. So yeah, just reach out to us in the chat or on Twitter or Facebook. Do we have a, we don't have a Facebook, not Facebook, No, not you know, Facebook yet. in the YouTube comments, email us if you somehow know our email, all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, before we get we get started, I wanted to uh, show off a little little something here, a little uh, little David K piano namesake. Oh no! <laughs> who's who's this talented guy we're looking at, David? I have no idea. <laughs> what are you talking about. <laughs> He almost looks like he's wearing the same shirt as you. Yeah, no. He, he changed his shirts. <laughs> but like most of them have to be glad. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I've been uh, you know just wanting to get my piano stuff out there a little bit more just for a change and just to show people like my life isn't just web development. It's, it's other stuff too. <laughs> right now yep you know what we'll see we'll see I, I might I might take a break and literally move my computer to the piano we'll see we've we've been uh, we've been working uh, to get that to get that happening since the uh, very first stream I believe yeah this is true <laughs> <laughs> oh hey hey Richard in the chat I see you there nice to nice to have you with us uh, well, today um, we're doing uh, a nice little animation. Uh, CodePin, uh, the platform we use for all of our um, collaborative coding right now, is uh, always does these challenges every week um, where they have a various various themes and you tag things and uh, lots of people participate in them and you get to see some really cool work. Uh, we're not strictly going off of uh, this uh, today, but we did want to kind of stick with the with the theme here uh, by going with a menu. Uh, so why don't you describe uh, our menu a little bit here? Sure. So um, this is an interesting menu just because, um, and actually I lied, we might do a little bit of JavaScript, but just for the prep work. So I think what we could do is, you know, use JavaScript to help us a little bit, but then get rid of it, right? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. All right, but the goal is little to no JavaScript. Anyway, uh, this menu, like you've seen on many similar sites, is a full screen menu. And these are, these are special because they're immersive, right? It's not just a little, a little tiny snippet of UI where you have to like find and go to, it's like, hey, you're in this new menu state where you could actually choose like the section and see subsections and all of that. And so you see this in a lot of sites, especially when the hierarchy uh, between sections is so deep. 
and <clears throat> and you have a lot of content. Um, and yeah, so that's what we're going to be creating too. And so you see when you open the menu that there's actually a lot of um, letter movements. And this is what I found really interesting about this menu is, you know, just the letter movements. Yeah, let me let me open this uh, in GIFScriber so we can uh, take a take a closer look here. Um, this is yeah, my favorite little Chrome extension that l allows us to um, play a GIF like a video, slow it down, and um, check it out a little bit closer. Um, so you can see as you're switching the sections there that there's kind of a nice little uh, text expansion effect, and then when you click the menu, you get nice little circle expansion happening on the icon itself which is cool and then the letters seem to kind of squeeze in to place um, they're coming from the right and squeezing in uh so that's uh that's pretty simple right david yeah we might need some help some help from our girlfriend javascript i suppose Yes, uh, <laughs> this this isn't something we we have to have JavaScript for, um, but well, uh, yeah, we could do it all by uh, hand. But yeah, <laughs> well, uh, this these kinds of effects are actually something that I've I've had to do a lot of lately, and uh, so for about half a year, I've actually been working on a library to help with this. Uh, this is a little bit of a debut; um, it's not officially launched, um, but. No way. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let me uh, let me pull up a little little something here. Um, this library is called Splitting. Why why do you think I call it Splitting, David? Uh, well, you're literally splitting characters and uh, splitting words, and I created a library called Flipping, so it's similar to Splitting. That was my dog, by the way. He choked on something. <laughs> And well, yeah, there's probably other reasons, but I don't want to split hairs over that. <laughs> well, yes, uh, it is uh, a splitting library that divides text. Uh, it also it also does a lot a lot more. Um, but the the tagline here, uh, CSS vars for split words and chars, um, is is a <laughs> nice a nice way to describe it. Um, so basically, it'll it'll divide up the text and then um, and then allow you to. Uh, to manipulate that with just CSS, um, the the JavaScript library runs uh, runs once basically on the element to divide it. You can uh, do words or chars. I'm working on a more uh, expansive uh, set of features that that won't necessarily increase the size of the library. Expensive. Right now, right now we're only we're only talking about uh, one and a half kilobytes minified so that's not bad that is uh quite good uh let me let me show a few a few demos real quick so that we can um kind of understand what we're what we're talking about here um gonna copy this over again none of this is sp specifically released yet so there's um there's a lot that's still working on um, but all of these effects you're about to see in this pin are just with CSS and and splitting, doing a little initial legwork. You can d see down here. This is this is all the real JavaScript that's happening. Everything else is happening in the CSS here. So we've got some nice blur effects. We've got a nice color stagger effect when you hover. Um, <laughs> individual letter stretching as just kind of a silly example. Um, there's so many great things, uh, and and one of the most common uh, things that we do uh, with uh, with CSS vars is is just staggering, and that's that's what a lot of these effects uh, really take advantage of. But you also get a lot more uh, potential there with um, with individual indexes for each letter. You get the total number of of letters. Um, you get you get the uh, number of words and things like that as well. Uh, yes love that one um, <laughs> so many so many interesting things you can do and th this is just you know a quick a quick set of examples that I uh, put together when I first um, first started making the library uh, let me see let me find the logo here aha uh -huh. here we go I think I think everyone can uh, appreciate this this logo here 
Yeah. A nice, nice little little banana for uh, for splitting. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's that's essentially what uh, what the purpose of splitting is is to um, divide up the text and give you um, individual spans for each text with some CSS variables that we'll manipulate, and we'll we'll dig a little bit more into those um, as we develop out the menu animation. So let's go over here into ah into code pen where we have some ah, oops sorry let me get back to collab mode there we go keyframers 1.13 that's where we're uh yeah something like that yeah, pretty close to there uh and so david's david's done a little bit of setup here um so let's see mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just some more CSS grid. I just basically take every opportunity I can to keep working on CSS grid. I still feel like a CSS grid noob, so uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I am still very uh, uncomfortable with it overall. I, I managed but that's why we did this. <laughs> I managed to uh, actually implement something with it earlier today uh, without having to look up the syntax. So that was, oh, that great. was nice. Yeah. I'm proud of you. A little, little victory there. Um, okay. So looking at um, a similar sort of uh, setup to what we've done before, where we have uh, UI layers um, that are all overlapping and uh, they will. Um, come in one by one, depending on what uh, what state we're in. Uh, how are you wanting to handle state today, David? Uh, we could we could do the checkbox approach like we've done before, or we could um, you know just handle it with JavaScript. All right, now I'm thinking maybe we'll just use JavaScript. It's uh, it's fine. We we've shown we've shown the uh, checkbox method, and and that works fine. But uh, I I think just in terms yeah. of straightforwardness it'll be it'll be easiest if we uh, if we just go with a little bit of JavaScript uh, if you want to, if you want to put together a state machine um, we can do that um, yeah, we might not need it just because we're going link to link maybe we'll see <laughs> yeah okay so I'm gonna add in splitting here um, just using unpackage uh, get that in there and add in the CSS as well. There's just a small bit of CSS that mainly um, gives you some extra uh, CSS variables available to use, uh, which is which is very very handy. Um, but you can you can uh, leave that out if you want to handle things yourself. That's fine. Okay. Do we need some uh, some images here? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's get you where you're working. Okay. Go on the sidebar there. All right. Let's see. How's everyone's week going? You you had a had a nice week, David. I had a pretty good week. It's actually the last week on my team at Microsoft, so oh. I'm still sticking with Microsoft, but next week I start on a new team, so that's going to be fun, especially because the week, it's sort of a weird week. You know, we have the uh, the 4th of July right in the middle of the week, so <laughs> so yeah, that that's definitely interesting. Yeah. Uh, so you, you got voted off, is that what? Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah. I guess you could say that. I'm I'm the weakest link. Goodbye. Oh, oops. Is that an HTML joke? <laughs> no, that was a reference to a very old game show. It's an American game show, so if you're watching from any country besides the great old United States of America, then you won't understand I, it. I thought it Actually, was never uh, mind. European. Just kidding. It was a European show. <laughs> like all good things American, it was, it was uh, European. European. Yep, that's that's just how things go. Yep. All right, so right now I'm just making the uh, 
I'm just adding a little thing for the menu button, but basically we have some layers going on. We have the menu sitting on top of everything right now, but of course we could just easily hide that. Um, How many layers do you have currently? Oh, dude, I'm on so many levels of layers. Well, you have no idea. UI layers. Oh, um, I. Uh, that's a good question. So there's two main layers. There's the the content layer, like where you're putting all the images now, and then there's the menu layer. So the menu layer sits on top of the content layer. Now, within the content layer, there is the well, I just call it UI dot UI right, and that UI right layer has layers in itself and so each of those articles are layers so mm -hmm. uh, I was I was just asking about the number of uh, UI layer instances it looks oh like no five. there's a yeah there's five and those are for each of the articles but the uh, the UI menu is technically a layer two I just didn't explicitly name that as a uh, you know that. yeah um, now oops Get out of splitting here um, and go back to the actual animation because the image is is actually changing with um, with the layer we might want to go ahead and put uh, UI left in there um, with the with the layer okay if that, wait what if that makes sense um, oh yeah just put put layers inside of UI left just do that and then that'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Yep, it'll work. <laughs> uh, can the images themselves be a UI layer? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Or actually, yeah, they probably can. Uh, if you could figure out, you know, how to do that and make it work, That's uh, right. then. Although you're you're doing some funny stuff to the CSS. I have not done anything to the CSS. I am just That's a little damn line, you know it. I, I am messing up the HTML, which is Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, that's why I meant the HTML. <laughs> like any good talented developer, I get HTML and CSS mixed up all the time. So wow, things are just changing like crazy. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. We're good? <laughs> uh, in theory. In theory. Okay, great. I only deal in theoreticals. <laughs> Correction column for the sidebar. And so we're going to align items. And I guess just did five content. Like start. I do wish that the names were better, honestly, for this because um, align items is for the Ross axis and justify content is for the main axis and you just sort of have to uh, uh, remember that yeah it, it would be nice if they were consistent regardless of flex direction column and um, a row uh, but I guess I guess it, it's Honest. meant to allow you to just easily toggle between the two um, without having to change the rest of the properties but I'll be I'll be darned if I ever remember them. Yeah. UI button. Okay. UI left. UI layer. All right. Um. Oh. Let me. All right. So flexbox might actually work. Just if I no. All right. So flex direction. It's going to be a column since we're going down, and then. Align items, center, and justify content, flex start, because we want that to sit at the top. So yeah, all right, now that works. Now we have that big white square, that's gonna be our menu for now. We're gonna talk about how we could do, you know, all the fancy transforms, which is actually not that involved with this one, but you know, it's still a neat thing to talk about. Um, so we'll we'll just get to that later. But for now, that's just a very clickable thing. Yeah. Uh, so real quick, I've got uh, I've got splitting dropped in, and um, I've I've got it targeting uh, UI heading, as you can see down here in the, in the yeah. JavaScript. 
and then if we inspect the DOM, don't change the DOM on me so it doesn't, or the JavaScript so it doesn't refresh, um, you can see it gets a splitting class applied. Um, and then in the style attribute, there's two CSS vars, one for word total and one for char total. Um, to prevent weird line wrapping, even when you're just splitting chars, you need to also wrap the words um, as well. And then, um, okay. and then within each word, we've got a char with a char index. And the word has a word index and some other fancy stuff. Uh, but that's that's the the gist of uh, what's happening with splitting. And we'll take All that in one line. That's yeah. amazing. And, <laughs> you know, a kilobyte, kilobyte and a half. Um, hey, thanks for following, Predator. Uh, and this is really going to allow us to do some, some fancy stuff. Um, do you want to go ahead and get a, a basic state machine or um, yeah, so so uh, for for the menu, we don't need the state machine. We're just going to be toggling this um, on and off. And so the way we do that, of course, is first we're going to target. Well, we need a menu. So const l menu. Remember, all of our elements are Spanish. Mm -hmm. and that's just a convention that we have because Shaw lives in Texas, and that's what they speak there, primarily. <laughs> Right, well, it, it depends where you are. You either speak Spanish or American. Uh, yes. But uh, UI menu. And then we're going to get the button. El Batono. But, well, button, I guess. No, button. Document. Query selector. And then that's just UI button. Okay, cool. So we have the menu, we have the button. And what we're going to do is uh, L button dot pad events listener. So when oops listener, when we click the button, all we're going to do is toggle. Just do a class toggle, and this is like a simple you know on off type of thing. So class list dot toggle uh, just visible, right? So we're going to have that visible modifier on the button, and. Uh, for for anyone wondering, like that, you know, dash visible thing class that I have, that's a modifier that's part of RSCSS. So it's basically the same thing as BEM, but it's a lot less typing than BEM. And <laughs> I don't like to type it. So you definitely don't have to do what I do. But uh, so we're just going to have this be. Uh, what was your thing? Like visibility hidden, visibility visible. Because what we want to do with this menu is that when we have the class applied, it sort of like does the animation. But when we unapply the class, we want it to animate out. And yeah. so um, actually, yeah, we, we could just have it always shown, but uh, have those pointer events there. So when it's not visible, uh, Pointer events none, well, but I'm breaking things. Where where is that gray color? Oh, there it is. Okay, to bottom. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I'm but what did you establish. break? I'm just trying to give us some some vars here that we can use. Ah, okay. And then that gray. Okay. Um. <laughs> you and not. Um. I, I prefer to be more explicit about um, about things. I, I guess in that instance, are you? Well, using all right. So here's here? here's why I'm using knots here. Um, it's more of a semantic thing. So basically, our UI menu is defined by these styles, right? And so if by default it's pointer events none, that makes absolutely no sense. It's like, hey. This is our menu. By the way, there's no pointer events on it. That doesn't sound like a default style. Um, yeah, and that shouldn't be a default style. So that's why I'm actually being more explicit by saying when it does not have the visible class, that's when you apply visibility hidden. And so that makes more semantic sense than by default, you can't click it because that loses the whole concept of, um, of like, how it's supposed to behave normally. 
or like the fact that that visible class is what handles you know whether it's visibility hidden or not so yeah i i hear you um i i i think i can be on board with with not in this instance okay other instances yeah <laughs> we could talk about but <laughs> never not not so shaw's in the not's not's club let it be known <laughs> Uh, okay, so what I've done, I, I just, instead of pointer events non, I, I toggled that over to visibility hidden, and then we'll do uh, our nice visibility transition. Um, so let's also say opacity zero for now. Hey, not, not. Who's not there? <laughs> uh, CSS selector. CSS selector, not who? Oh, you want me to be more specific? <laughs> you are. <laughs> I just made that one up. Really? I'm gonna, t I'm gonna tweet it. It's gonna get like five favorites. You'll see. <laughs> you have At least five, maybe six, if it's like really, really good. You have that many alt accounts? <laughs> uh, no, I have only four. I was hoping that you would favorite it at least. Mm. <laughs> We'll see about that. Uh, visibility. Yeah. All right. So we have our button working, but the I guess one of the problems is that it disappears immediately. Well, so what I did is I upped the Z index of it. Oh, yeah. okay. I see. Seconds. Six seconds. By the way, if you hear random sounds, my dog is just making making funny sounds tonight. <laughs> It's pretty. He he just stared at me. He knows I'm talking about him. So. Well, funnily enough, I just yeah. got joined by uh, two of my cats, so they might be making some funny sounds as well. Oh, okay. Uh, Great. Okay, so what what we have here? Um, just looking at line ninety-seven. Hey, move your cursor. I can't see. Um, oh, who cares? Wait, where's my cursor? Okay, okay. sorry about that. Uh, so uh, transition opacity 0.5 seconds linear, nothing crazy there. But mm -hmm. because we don't want um, that element actually to be clickable or anything, um, we can set that to visibility hidden. Um, the problem with that is um, if we leave off this other stuff, we get a nice transition in because it's instantly visible. Um, stop changing that HTML. Sorry, I just need to. But when we <laughs> when we go to uh, transition out, it just immediately disappears because it's automatically going to visibility hidden. So instead, if we give our uh, visibility a little bit of a transition, along with a transition delay um, uh, equal to the duration of the animation, um, it will wait until the uh, delay is finished, and then it will toggle back to visibility hidden, so you get the uh, advantage of not being able to click it or do anything in it. Cool. Yeah. So anyway, I, I use that technique a ton, and I will probably continue to uh, yeah. install the version. And I, I would like, that. we should do like a mini video on that, just like how that works. By the way, a mini um, uh, <laughs> a video. Um, you see like visibility zero S. Uh, some of you might be wondering, why can't you just use zero? You cannot do that. You need to use zero S. I don't know why. It, you used this is to be actually, able to do that. Yeah, you used to. And a lot of my demos actually had just zero instead of zero seconds. But uh, I guess all the browsers decided that they don't like that anymore. So they straight up changed it. And now you have to be explicit by saying zero seconds. So hopefully that doesn't trip, you know, some of you up. Hey, okay, Commander, thank you for following. Glad to have you on board. Uh, okay, so yeah, so we've got our basic menu transition. Um, and it's just a simple fade right now. Um, hey, what's the SAS function to make a, um, a color uh, slightly transparent? Oh, so just use RGBA, 
And then instead of the three values, you could just stick in the color. So. Uh, excellent. That should work. Yeah. Okay. All right, now I'm going to fool around with the HTML. So. Go right ahead. All right, I will. <laughs> let's see. Let's take a look at the comp here and see what's supposed to be happening. Um, okay, we've got just all those different nav items happening. You know what we are, Shaw? We are crazy. passionate. Oh, we're crazy. Really passionate, sure. We're, we're enduring. Enduring? We're also en enduring, enduring like we endure. We are appro- wait, what is that? Approachable. We are approachable. We are also creative. And we are agilely. Oh, what's agilely? We are agilely. I don't know what agilely is, though. I think that's a French word. Agile? Yeah. Agile. Uh, we are agile. Actually, let's add some more accents on there. Uh, that one looks fun. Uh, uh, e. Let's do, okay, uh, Gile. Gile. Because I don't know what Agile means, and I know that every single company that says they're Agile, they, so nobody knows what Agile means. Nope. Hence the accents, that's what the accents signify. Right, and then we can trademark it. If you know what actual, uh, word, blah, blah. if you know what Agile means, please, Tell us what it means in the chat and how it's different than waterfall and what the hell is scrum. I feel like scrum is like just this this food that they serve in a uh, business prison <laughs> or something like that. Uh, let's see. Like, hey, it's for lunch. Got some scrum. UI heading. Do we have any more? Do we have any styles on UI heading yet? Uh no, not that I know of. They're just they're just there. Okay, I'm gonna um, start styling. Them. I wonder why there's a big gap though. Like between endearing and apprehensible, there's a gap. I mean, like with the definition of the two words, there's obviously a gap, but visually there's a gap as well. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Um... Uh, yeah, uh, good question. <laughs> All right, we're having way too much fun with this. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, let me just stick some styles on those UI headings. They should at least be text transform uppercase. So let's just do that. Yeah. And that's why in CodePen I love, you could just type TTU. And that's like just a really nice uh, shortcut for that. All right, did, did you figure out why they're so uh, spread out -y? I I have not. Um, I'm, I'm looking for a font here. Um, ah, you're looking for a font. Yeah. So all right, I, well, I, I will. my priorities. <laughs> it's all good. I'll investigate. It, oh, it probably has something to do with the CSS grid um, type of stuff. So yes. I will go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and remedy that. No problem. Uh, I think what I could do is just put all these headings in a in a div, and then group them together, and then we could specify where on the grid they will live. Because in that UI writes, we have two rows, um, and I could I could tell you <clears throat> exactly what those are. They are, can I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. I'm supposed to. That's my job. Okay, yeah, so the rows, we have 15 viewport height units, one FR, so just like the rest of the free space, and 15 viewport units again. So they're going to sit right in the middle there. And so we just need to specify that the UI menu UI right, um, the, uh, 
yeah, the UI right, uh, what did I call it? Oh, UI headings. That needs to live in the middle. So that's going to live between row two and row three. So we just do um, grid row, yes, grid row two slash three. And then now, now they're in the right area. So I could do display flex, uh, flex direction column, and then I could space them out. Uh, let's do space a, space between, right? Space between. So justify content space between, which would make a really great song title. Yeah, just space between. Is Dave Matthews At least I think so. Around? Uh, Dave Matthews band? I don't yeah. know. I haven't heard about them in a while. Yeah, it's been been a little while. Been yeah. Little while. That was them, right? All right. So yeah, if you click the menu, I have I have my uh, we have our ducks in a row, right there. Okay. Let me open the menu and see what you've done. What have you done? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm all right. right. And so because of splitting, these are ready to go. They're ready to animate. Each one of those letters has a CSS variable attached to it where it says the uh, basically the index of the letter, right? Yes. We're going to use those to um, determine in the transition how far it goes. And so we're, we're going to see, like, you could do a lot of really cool effects with splitting. Um, oh, that's a nice font. Yeah, I think. Just, just doing a little... Little uh, improvement here. Yeah, I um, dig it. Okay, so yeah, why don't why don't we um, go ahead and do a little bit of the the splitting text effect uh, while we're um, while we're here? Uh, so let's say let's move. Fine with me. Let's see. Let's move this up. Where's our knot? Okay, I'm gonna um, move. All of the menu toggling stuff into its own section so things are a little bit clearer here all right fair enough i'm i'm actually excited to see how this is going to turn out not that i don't believe in you because i don't um but it's just going to be interesting to see okay, at, at least at least we're being honest here okay so yeah. let's let's just do this here ui heading uh, dot char oh. Thanks for following Corpse. Glad to have you with us, I think. Uh, okay, so UI heading char. Let's just say uh, transform translate x 100%. Great. Okay, now we've got. Oh, weird. <laughs> now we've got all of our uh, chars over 100%. But uh, that's inconsistent because it's not a fixed width font. So if instead we said like 1M, okay, great. Everything is over 1M. Yeah. Um, so why don't we instead say um, transition, transform, 0.4 seconds linear. And then go up here to our not visible state and add the actual transform. Uh, which which link are you referring to, Doug? Um, we can maybe help you out. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, we've got our our chars shifting uh, over. Let's maybe see. the Instagram link or the Dribble link or the GitHub link or. Well, we have we have a bot the that's uh, sharing some some links. Ah, okay. So. so so we could just blame the bot. I mean, yes. that's always a good good option. Blame the bots. Okay, hey, check that out. We've got the perfect menu comparison, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's that's the basics of our effect here. Um, but actually what we want to do is play with transition delay and use our fancy um, calc function times var char index. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, that didn't work because 
Settings. There we go. So let's see. Now we've got all the letters coming in, but that's not exactly what we want. <laughs> it's a cool effect, uh, but no, it's, it doesn't really go with the, the feel that we want. Right. Um, so. I like it, though. I dig it. What we can instead do uh, is change this to transition duration and do 0.4 seconds plus 0.1 times var chart index. There we go. That's kind of nice. But I think we need a little bit more spacing here to give it a more dramatic effect. And we should probably, you know, get some um, get some kind of worthwhile easing on that. Um, okay, let's see. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Just real quick, does window? Uh, dot add events listener key up. Is that going to work? Or do I have to do it on the actual documents? Let's find out. You might need to do document. Ah, yes. Okay. Oh. Uh, so let me explain what I did uh, here. Um, so when we're hiding the menu, we want the, um, the text to go back the opposite way. And so uh, what we've done, or what I've done here, is added uh, the transition duration to the not visible state um, to increase the duration um, in a negative way. Um, so we're using the char total minus the char index so that the last characters go first um, by multiplying that 0.1 second delay. So coming in, we get that nice little effect. And I dig it. Um, what do you think? Is that is that about the effect we're going for? Oh, uh, let me take that's a look. a little too delayed. Hold on. Uh, no. So the, the thing is that they all move at, well, actually here, and let, let me take a look. Are they all okay, moving? So they're all moving at the same time. Okay, they're just more distant? So, well, the the thing is that they all have the exact same duration. They just have different starting points. But yes. the duration is exactly the same. Well, that's even easier. Translate X, calc. Okay, I like easier. <laughs> uh, 1N plus 0.2N times bar char index hmm. yeah there we go and we could also set opacity zero if we wanted to give that How's, how's that feel to you? Uh, I will tell you. Yeah, that's that's what we want. Now, uh, what I would do, just like little tweaks, is make the duration a little bit longer and give it an easing that, like we talked about, like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, like the 0, 1 type of easing, because that's going to like give you an extremely smooth, um, uh, smooth start and end. So, yeah, um, definitely needs some some easing there. Um, so, let me try to do this from memory. Cubic Bezier, point five zero, point five one. 
man, we should make a game. You, you know, it'd be fun. Like we have like these certain, um, like level one would be, it shows you the curve, right? And so you have to guess the uh, cubic Bezier numbers for it. And then like the harder level, it would be no curve. It would just be, you see an animation and you have to guess. Oh, that would be such a good game. Please tell us in the chat if you think that that would be a good game. Like you basically have to guess that. Yeah, maybe it only sounds fun to me. This sounds like a very David thing to do. But I think that that would be a lot of fun. Just in, and it's useful too because it's going to train you to uh, use to your eyes, use your eyes, and to make a good judgment call on what the proper cubic bezier should be. That would be really cool. Because um, I know that there were similar games like with font kerning where you had to move a misplaced letter to the correct place. And obviously that's hard to do precisely, uh, but it tells you how close you were. And so you get more points the closer you are. So, yeah. So, yeah. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> I know I would be terrible at it, uh, so that is why I'm not interested in playing. But <laughs> I, I can definitely see uh, how that would that would be helpful. Well, I'm going to make it and I'm going to force you to play it, so. Okay. And yeah, that, that left side menu actually isn't really doing um, any, any strict text effects. It's just kind of uh, sliding to the, to the left and fading in. Um, so I don't think we need to do anything about that. Um, yeah. Sorry. Right, so, cool. I'm I'm just adding the JavaScript right now to toggle the uh, the articles. So, and I'm using like very, <laughs> very imperative JavaScripts just because uh, short on time. Now, imperative JavaScript is great if you need to get something done quickly, but it's not maintainable. So, I mean, definitely, you know reconsider this approach if you are trying to use it in a real life project and there's many ways to go about it like in fact if you use uh react's router or views router then you know you could set this up via routes now the important thing is because we're doing animation routes 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 however you pronounce it uh the important thing though is to keep the layers on top of each other and not make them disappear immediately because that's something I see in so many apps because it's the easiest thing to do. The layers just disappear and you lose any possibility to do any exit animation. And so it just it's a it's a jump state and that's something that we want to avoid as uh, as animators. Yeah. So let's see. I'm gonna actually play with more of a uh as you're here, try and get something a little more custom. Class list, is it add and remove? Like, is that the API for that? Is, is what? Is it add and remove? For what? For the uh, the class list API, uh, like I when guess. you have an element .add remove. I always forget if it's add, delete, add, set, unset because they there's so many different words for uh, for the same thing. Yeah, add, remove, and toggle um, are the are the main methods there. Um, yeah, I think you can. There's also a has. Is that right? I can has class list CS class JavaScript class list. Let's see, add remove item. Hmm. I guess that's a an array of of classes or uh, the an element from the array of classes. Uh, toggle contains. That's right. That checks if it has that. 
Huh. And apparently there's a replace method, which I have never used uh, because it's only in Chrome 61 and Firefox 49. Uh, that's still a rather interesting addition. Good. Uh, okay, so how are you going to handle the, the layer toggling? Um, well, jeez. Oh, um, oh, you're just doing um, a current class? Yeah, yeah. So just toggling a current class on each one of those um, things. Yeah, and this, this kind of stuff is where uh, Vue and React and all of those uh, frameworks come in very handy. Heck, even, even jQuery at this point. But... Yep, good old Jake. <laughs> Jake is, uh, is pretty weary at this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so the way I have it set up right now is you use your arrow keys. So that, that's all that's happening. I didn't want to deal with buttons. So yep. you toggle through the articles using your arrow keys, uh, up and down. That works rather well. OK, so where are you doing? Or I guess you could do left and right. Let me just add that real quick. Uh, it's pretty easy. Or, yeah, arrow up or arrow right. Yeah, this is a feature, not a bug. You could use the up or right arrows to go to the next. Uh, the next article, so. Okay, so yeah, again, this is <laughs> where uh, merging the uh, the left and the UI layers might be might be helpful. Um, Are you trying to? Uh, so right now, you know, you're just toggling the actual article, but the image on the side there needs to um, have a little bit, oh, of, a little bit of stuff too. Oh, right. That's, yeah. That's okay. We could just, you know what, let's keep the same HTML structure for now. <laughs> really? Uh, yes. And here's why. Um, imagine in like, yeah, just imagine in any React app or any Vue app, the, the reality is sometimes those aren't going to live under the same tree in the HTML, so you have to target them separately. So you have this, mm -hmm. uh, this higher atomic state that says, right now we're in Article 1 or Article 5 or whatever, and so that dictates to each of the separate parts of the app what needs to show, and those parts might not live right next to each other. Uh, so that's... I'm just being lazy, but it's also a good point, I think. <laughs> Is it? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll just, uh, all right, so all of these UI layer, uh, UI left, UI layer, I'm just going to make these, uh, there's only four images? Uh, there should be, oh, I think I copied one out. Yep, there you go. Okay, okay. no worries, no worries. So we're going to have UI layer, UI image, and the current one is going to be uh, that first one over there. And so let's see. So now, actually, the CSS or sorry, the JavaScript becomes easier. So we could do query selector all for current dot for each uh, l l dot classes dot remove current. So that actually works out pretty nicely. Um, and then query selector all for article and child. And also uh, dot, I added a UI image class and with the same end child. So. UI image with that end child, and then we'll add current. So hopefully that just works. 
unless I get a JavaScript error. Uh, can I read proper? Oh, because I had to for each it. Sorry, for each l all that passes that add current. And that JavaScript needs to be cleaned up. And it's not working, which is great. Or is it? Oh, it's working. That's a great feeling to sound so confident about what you're doing, but internally you're just freaking out. Like seeing like, wait, is this really going to work? Okay, it's not working. Ah, it is working. We just don't have a fifth image. That's okay. I gave you a fifth image. You just didn't add the class to it. Or maybe you added it after the fact, just to make me look bad. Stream, One of the two. Stream. Okay, cool. This is between you and me. David doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, this is good. We have our layers. But what we want to do is add uh, the cool transition effects uh, using splitting and all that into that. So. Yes. Uh, so let me let me do a little. Um, I don't like this font on the paragraph, so. Yeah, feel free to update that. Okay, I will. Just as you're doing your thing. Yeah, I'm just cleaning up the um, the JavaScript a little bit and uh, allowing for some some buttons in there. Okay, and so this is why I actually probably should have started with a state machine. And I know I talked about state machines a lot, but this is one of the reasons why state machines are good is because basically we have a transition between five finite states one two three four five they all go in a sequence and at first i just hard coded the fact that when you press the left or right uh buttons on your keyboard the left and right keys i guess they're not buttons actually they are buttons but anyway you press one of them they go to the next date um but instead, we want to say that whether you press the right button or you press the button that says go right, you know, go the next state. And so with state machines, that becomes a lot easier to control because you could just add the right button events. But over here, we sort of had to update it, which I guess isn't that bad because yeah. uh, Shaw's cleaning it up right now. Yeah. But we do have to, actually, no, it is pretty bad. Because that add event listener thing, now we have to basically copy and paste that entire thing for the button presses, which sucks. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Um, oh, God, so, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess there's a little bit uh, that needs to happen there. But um, yeah. So one of, the, one of the things I'm changing really quick is doing, um, here we go, uh, let's say L equals length index is the next page okay don't worry about it um, okay All right, lights pointed. All right, so how are you going to tackle this? Okay. Well, let me make sure my my math is right here. Uh, nope. Okay, let's do some good old console dot logging and see what's happening. None. Okay. Uh, the console is apparently hungry. Yeah, so you want to, uh, you know, just make sure that we can't go past those bounds. Right. right? Um, zero or four. So zero is our minimum, four is our maximum. Yeah. And then we translate those to and child of one to five. And that's what we do. Oh, pre-selector all. That's what I need. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Got it. Okay. 
So yes, the uh, modulus operator here allows uh, allows the number to kind of loop around. Um, so no matter what next page is, it could be 500, it could be five. Um, if it is greater than uh, five, it's just gonna start looping around because that's the remainder of, uh, of what's left. But because uh, we want it to support negative numbers as well, um, we add the total there and do another another modulus. So even if it's negative one, it'll still uh, loop back around to the positive number. Uh, that's a pretty cool, uh, yeah, that's a pretty cool trick. Something like that. Um, and this way we have kind of our, um, our navigation logic all uh, in, in one little function. So all we have to do is call, um, is call navigate, uh, which we could probably call up here instead of doing the next page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, so my question to you, and so this is sort of a begging the question for like state machines, is <laughs> how would you get it so that it works with pressing the physical buttons? Uh, yeah, so w we will need some... Uh... You need to copy and paste this entire thing. No, no, no. Yes. I, I bet you can't do it without copying and pasting the entire thing. <laughs> okay. So all we need to do is a button, class equals UI nav left, class equals UI nav right, document, query, selector, UI nav left. All we do is uh, navigate current page minus one. Oh, I guess I need to add an event listener there. That was my dog. <laughs> Did he sneeze? Did she sneeze? Well, it sounds like a sneeze. You I nav right. Let's go plus one. And boop, boop, boop. All right. Uh, so I, I didn't have to uh, copy and paste all of this junk, um, but I did, you know, basically duplicate the event listeners there. We could do this, you know, with a um, data attribute, data nav equals, you know, one, um, data nav equals negative one, um, but we'd still have to do like a query selector all for each, um, well, no, I guess it could um, be a general class. No, we'd still, yeah, we'd still need to do a query selector all and a loop around it. So there's, there's not much of a point there. Um, we can just keep it straightforward and uh, have it navigate there. Is that acceptable? Uh, let me see. Uh, you are not, not, all right, so navigate, 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 navigate. It's a lot of repetition, but all right, I'm down for it. Eh. That's that's fine. That's acceptable. Yes, when we have more time, like I, I would love to get in depth, like with just how state machines can really, really help things. Yeah, it, it'd be uh, kind of nice to do an episode where we just go back and improve <laughs> the uh, the overall code of what we did. Yeah. But you know what? That's what is so fun about CodePen is that you could write, I, I, I don't want to call it garbage code or junk code, but it's basically scratch code, like whatever you would. Just fork it. Like, oh, right. So you've heard the, the phrase or whatever, that the best business ideas, they're written on napkins, like cocktail napkins in bars or something like that, right? They're not written on fancy paper with like immaculate handwriting. Um, with like the most fleshed out detailed descriptions and diagrams ever. They're just scratched on a napkin because you just had this idea and you went to go do it. And so CodePen sort of embodies that, which is really great. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and ideally here, um, we'd probably have some kind of shared class between um, UI menu and UI layer to do to handle that um, toggling uh, between you know visible and not visible 
basically, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. Let's go ahead and actually just copy this whole chunk here and move it down to UI layer um, and do, uh oh, uh oh, what did I do? No, go away. Excuse me. Don't need you up there. Thank you. Uh, okay. Take away that. Put that up there. So right now, by the way, in case you're wondering, I'm I'm working on the the tiny little interaction on the the right. Oh, you the know the, that little button because. And I'll explain this in a little bit, but they're doing something really, really cool. I've actually never seen this type of morphing done in a button before. It's a simple effect, but it's super cool. And I'm really excited to show it. That's that's all I want to say, so. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm excited yeah. to see that. Uh, and if, actually just from copying and pasting um, exactly from the menu there, we get, uh, Pretty pretty close comparison uh, to the to the effect here in the in the gif. Yeah, I, I dig it. I I think the the paragraph did that move a bit or should it move? Uh, sorry. I think it it. it it does a little bit of a yeah it does a little bit of a nudge. Yeah, there's just a little bit of a shift and that's, yeah you know depending on where it's where it's coming from and I can I can work on that as well, but uh, for right now. I think I can um, work with this. Uh, so actually, what needs to happen is it's closer together and spreading out. Um, Oh, this is going to be so cool. <laughs> so cool. It's actually it's actually trickier than I thought, but in a good way. I, I see some I see some fun stuff happening with that. Yeah. Basically, and I'll I'll just give a little teaser here. It's a 3D transform. Pretty cool, huh? Do I need to get out my glasses? <laughs> Yep, your red and cyan glasses. How do you pronounce that? Cayenne? S cyan. No, cayenne, cayenne's the name of a pepper. Cyan. So it's not cyan. Cyan sounds like a very terrible pronunciation. Well, it is a terrible pronunciation, but it also sounds like a terrible pronunciation. Uh, so not cyan. Cyan. Cayenne? Yeah. Cyan. Uh, hold on one second. I'll be right back. All right. Well, Shaw has left us forever, which means that you are stuck with me. Um, I apologize in advance. This can be our little secret. We could talk about whatever. So, yeah. Basically, I'm going to build this cubic Bezier thing. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, charge a lot of money to play it and be rich. And then, that's what's going to happen to the stream. It's going to be no more because I'm going to leave a newly formed millionaire with my Cubic Bezier game. That's yeah. I'll probably sell it to some company for millions and millions of dollars. Uh, Shaw doesn't even know any of this, of course. Anyway, okay. So back to the animation. Uh, okay, let's see what Shaw is doing over here because <laughs> there is some CSS that's breaking. So what I'm going to do is comment out his broken CSS just so I could get things working over here, which things are not working. So we'll figure that out. But what I'm doing to the button, and I wish I could scroll his screen. I can't. Oh, thank you for following Jenny XTC. Um, I'm not sure what XTC stands for, but thanks for following us. Um, anyway, so if you go to the dribble and you look at the original animation, the button on the right, that's 
that's morphing, right? And it's one of those morphings that you've seen many, many times before. Uh, we have two lines that morph into an X, but this one does it in a unique way. And this is what I love about Tubic Studios. They always take things to the next level. Uh, instead of just morphing, they morph in 3D. And so we're, we're gonna be having to do uh, some fun 3D rotations over here. So I'm trying to think, all right. So Z axis is gonna need to rotate as well. So rotate Z, oh, 45 degrees. Let's see if that's right. Oh, that totally went the wrong way. Uh, did it go the wrong way? Now let's do negative 45 degrees. Let's see. Uh, sorry, I, I broke things. Uh, try again. That's OK. Hey, thanks for following Loop and uh, Jenny earlier. Sorry for, uh, for missing that. But appreciate you guys following. Uh, I see. What's your. Uh, 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 come on, mouse. Come back. Do you ever just lose your, your cursor? Yeah. I, I, all the time. I drop mine all the time. I just can't find it. It's a bad habit. <laughs> So maybe not. So the negative forty-five degrees. Ah, that's what it is. Why? Heading keeps okay, well, that's obviously wrong. I'm playing with the X right now. So transform origin. Did you know that transform origin is animatable? Yes. We should we should do an app. So uh, there's really interesting effects that you could do uh, with with that. Yeah, um, I think there's an old pin I have. Um, what is it? Maybe perspective uh, origin. Oh yeah, you could animate perspective too, couldn't you? Is off. So this is uh, an old pin I have animating perspective origin to simulate kind of a camera a camera move um, and giving just some overlapping effects. I remember it being a much more interesting animation when I first built it, but hey, <laughs> it's pretty cool, I guess, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, anyway, perspective origin, totally animatable along with transform origin and basically any other property. Um, let's see here. Okay, I'm just making sure I got my directions correct. I don't think I do. So weird. I mean, it looks super cool. So you know what? Creative choice, what I did for the... <laughs> For the top button animation, I'm totally keeping that. And that's what it's going to be. Ooh. I dig it. Because it's super cool. That is cool. Uh, let me get that um, get down to where you've been working. Uh, like, yeah, this is fun. I love playing with Rotate. Um, so yeah, we should, we should do a tutorial or an episode or something on just Rotate because um, I know it could trip a lot of people up thinking about which axis to rotate on. Like, so the Z, the Z axis is what comes out towards you, towards you and away from you. Y is up and down, X is left and right. And so if you could just think of something rotating along those axes, uh, and Z is, what is Z? Z is like, was it the yaw or the pitch or I, I don't know? There's different words <laughs> for it too. I'm sort of glad that CSS, you know, whoever made or invented CSS chose rotate instead of like yaw and pitch, even though that would have been cool. Like yaw, pitch, and skew or whatever the, uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, the old camera. <laughs> uh, 
control. Well, the, the camera or uh, airplanes. Yeah. And I'll give these a little bit of a border radius. Uh, Report height. Cool, so that they're nice and... Uh... It's from aeronautics. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> Thanks for the correction there. Um... I really dig that button effect. <laughs> yeah, that, that feels really nice. Um, the the hover feels a little fragile. Um, might need to add some some padding to it or just making that. I, I don't know why, though, because the hover is on the button. And mm, yeah, nice. and there's no reason for the button to like. Yeah, my button. Background red. I, I don't know. Yeah, so there's a button. So you could see. Oh. Thank goodness. EVH does too. Oh, wait. Wait, I want it visible. I don't know what I'm doing. So I guess by default, that's another good trivia thing too. Back face visibility is visible by default. So that's nothing you really need to ever worry about. That's cool. Let's see, UI heading. UI heading in the menu, I think just in general. On the UI heading, we want uh, white space, no wrap. Yep. Good gravy, where is heading? There we go. White space, no wrap. And that's no wrap with no space. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the uh, one of the original, you know, CSS mistakes. All right, so I'm doing this button thing on hover that needs to change, and this is what state machines are good for too. <laughs> is the fact that we need some global state that says we're currently in the menu. Um, because right now we have uh, we have menu. Where's my silly toggle thing that I'm doing? Oh yeah, so uh, add event listener l menu dot classes dot toggle visible. So now I'm going to have to do the exact same thing to l button l button dot class list dot toggle. Uh, I'm going to give it open as a modifier class. Uh, so. Button. So instead of uh, hover, I'm just going to give it dot .open, oops, dot .open. And so now it changes to an X, and it stays as an X. So yes, that's a really nice effect. That's like something that you would see on an agency website. <laughs> it is. I do. Yeah. Really cool. Um, and we did it in less than two hours, too. Yes. Uh, and let's, uh, let me see. Let me do the content animation really quick. Have that slide up. Uh, right, yeah. Off. That's a um, good do one to do. UI layer, UI content, and uh, content. Uh, If things are looking weird, I'm playing with blend modes. I know I shouldn't, but I really want to. So, UI content. can you change the? Uh, I wonder, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but mix the, uh, or sorry, not mix, but change the. Ah, uh, well, what's it called? Change the the intensity of a mixed blend mode. Hmm, maybe? Thanks. Uh, I don't know that you can actually adjust the intensity other than going with the most intense, intense effect and making it... Um, a, right, so I, th I think what we could use instead is CSS filters. What I'm basically trying to do 
is make the images on the left a little bit lighter. But I don't want to do that just by, you know, doing opacity. Actually, I probably could use opacity. But I, I really want to use a uh, CSS filter to do this. And so, um, let's see. It be, because with CSS filters, not only can you adjust the values or the intensity, but you could also um, you could also stack filters on top of each other, which is really cool. So if I do, for example, like a filter brightness, and I could say 0.4, let's see how that looks. Oh, no. No, I don't want to do that. Can I give it like a value of 2, make it super bright? Oh, that's extremely bright. <laughs> I think brightness one is is no change. Uh, so contrast four. Now that looks too too terrible. Yeah, you just lowered the contrast there. Let's put that on screen. What are, what are you, effect are you trying to go for there? Just make it a little lighter. And I guess I could use opacity, but let's see how it looks with opacity. Like just a point six or something like that. There you go. Maybe not. Yeah. Oops. That's all you yeah. need, David. Who needs who needs mixed blend mode? All right. Um, okay, I just want to experiment, but there you go. Um, yeah. You can use opacity, mixed blend mode. I just need to make this a little bit lighter. Uh now I'm, I'm having that stylistic some, effect. In in the menu, it's actually uh that whole area is now white is that intentional the ui image area uh in the menu yeah if you oh that is not intentional oh, uh that's because UI i left. <laughs> yeah i i put it globally so i guess i should do yeah we don't do a great job of uh isolating yeah. our, our our purposes in in different classes we really Sorry. should do like a layout, um, a layout uh, class setup and um, stylistic class setups. You're right. You're right. All right. Fine. Got UI images Jeez. already already added it. There we go. <laughs> okay. okay. Fine. Perfect. <laughs> uh, okay. And now I'm gonna just style those nav buttons a little bit. Um, and I, th I think we can can uh, wrap it up. Let's see, UI controls. Where are you? And so the images they just fade, right? Actually, they don't. They slide. I'm gonna take care of that. Yay! They slide. They totally slide. Uh, oh yeah, they've got that left and right movement. So where where are you changing that? Uh, so down down at the towards the very bottom, I've got UI layer uh, that that whole animation. So oh, okay, I see. So UI content, UI heading, not UI currents, UI contents, UI heading. Where's the image? Oh, you're just doing yeah. opacity. Right, that's on. the overall opacity. So um, yeah, it. And if instead um, you did, um, you could do image and then translate x to m, um, and then do image here. Yeah, so now we just have to add that transition uh, property because we have, well, that's working. Uh, we're, we're recreating a an animation from dribble I'll include that link here um, uh, we've we've only been working for about uh, an hour and a half now and we're just recreating this animation um, using mostly CSS and just a little bit of JavaScript to handle these, these state changes um, yeah and one thing I'm gonna do for the image is uh, just happened. Um, set the width to width calc 100%. Uh, 
percent plus two m. Doing? Ah, don't worry about. It. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to because uh, and to this is a the other layer out. Yeah, yeah, because I want them to all go in the same direction, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're they're sort of not behaving. Not at all. All right, so current image transform none, and then. Not current, which is probably. Oh, that that's probably a specificity thing, where. Yeah, not is greater than, the. Yeah. Proper one. So just move your. Well, moving your stuff down probably won't. Uh yeah. Let's see. UI current not. Caring about specificity. <laughs> sure. And that almost works. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So gap, we yeah. yeah basically we want all of the images by default to move to the to the left. Right. Um. No. no. Left. <laughs> left. Yes. Yes. Correct. Um, or do we? No, yeah, we totally do. do we? But it, it, like, where it's starting from. Um, oh, okay. So I got it. Uh, plus UI layer. And then, man, this is some, this is some really nasty selectors. That image. Now, this one we transform, translate X, uh, 10%. But you're not going to see that because those are already hidden. Uh, no, that's not working. Uh, just up, up here, because, yeah, that should, in theory, happen up here. Um, transform, All right, let's uh, translate get rid of this. Let's ten percent, and then that should be the default state because you're then applying a transform none on the current. Yep, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so the current one, the transform should be translate x uh, negative ten. So it should always okay. move to the to the left. So that's what we want. Um, all right. So the current one should have no transform, and any one after the current one should um, yeah be ten. Oh geez, this is like a puzzle. It's like one of those escape rooms, you know? <laughs> like, uh, all right, so here, let's make this 10. Because, yeah, by default, they're all. Oh, you're, you're doing dot image. It just needs to be. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, that's, that's all it was. Yep. But, um, yeah, one thing that bothers me is the opacity. That's it. That's it. We could just. Fix the opacity, and then, or can we? Or can we? Um, Is it possible? We have opacity zero. Oh god, yeah, that that opacity is a mess. <laughs> uh, okay. Because what's happening is the back layer is exposed when that happens. Uh, so can we? Um, how do we? Uh, what are you? Oh, oh, what are you can, trying can, to accomplish? Can we give a little delay to the opacity so that you know only once the other image came? Actually, you know what? It's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah, I I would. Is there a way to uh, not have like the edge oh, of the image shown? Okay. Yeah. 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 So really, <laughs> really, really simple solution. I'm going to show you, and you're going to uh, freak out. But these images should be 
um they should be bigger yeah uh, I, I set them <laughs> i set them that way but they need margin auto yeah display block margin actually negative 10 percent Yeah, so I guess if we give the images like height 110% and width auto, that might work. Well, right? uh, no, I, I've, given them, I've given them the, the proper width. Um, there's just something off. Negative 10% uh, width 100%. All right. Yeah, basically if we make them wide enough, then it's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. Transform none. And we have that gap on the right for whatever reason. Yeah, I, I'm thinking my image sizing is not happening correctly. Uh, let's see what's actually going on with the size of the element. Where were you doing the image sizing? Uh, up at the up at the top. Um, oh. yeah, so I've got a negative margin, but for some reason that's leaving a margin. Mm. Yeah, I would guess like instead of using negative margin, we could use, um, just, just make it, oh, I see what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, which, let's see. Display flex. Nope. It's going to be based on the parent. If I do negative five percent, nope. Um, hmm. So much spaghetti code. I'm a little <laughs> lost. Yeah. Yes, it's possible to have spaghetti code in C. Actually, obviously, I mean, it's very, very possible to have spaghetti code in CSS, for sure. So strange. Is with fifty percent. Is that gonna do it? Nope. So how how do you plan on? Do you think about using like the contents? Um, uh, whatever it's called. Um, UI image. Be the object uh, fit, right? Yeah, yeah, it's well, object it, fit. It is. It is object fit that I've got on there, but. I, I was thinking gotcha. that was actually the issue, and I tried to take it off, and that, that did not do anything. Uh, so something is off with the um, width 100, uh, more than 100% for some reason. I don't know why that is, because um, it doesn't look like the image is actually becoming wider than the... Oh. Ah, oh, geez. Image max width 100%. Hide auto. Ignore. Ignore everything. Everything we just did was pointless. Um, we are now... Now in a great spot. All right. So, all right. Back to business, everyone. Proceed. There we go. All right, uh, so yeah, let me just do some of those nav buttons really quick. I feel sure. Repeat six. Man, I really need to. <laughs> Just take a nice crash course on this uh, 
this CSS grid stuff, just because there's so many cool properties. I, I saw something on autofill and auto fits and just it's, it's magical how well uh, that works. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yes, if anyone is looking um, to take a crash course, uh, Wes Boss has a great CSS grid course. Uh, it's cssgrid.io, uh, and it is totally free, sponsored by uh, by Firefox. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's an excellent course. So cssgrid.io. He must have bought that URL, like, years ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's it's a whole video series, uh, very similar to uh, what, what we do here. Um, but very, very polished and, and put together because he's not streaming it live. Uh, and it's uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, yeah, for I've, sure. I've yet to actually go through it, uh, so uh, I can't specifically vouch for it, but everything else he's done is is superb. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to try to go through it for sure. Mm-hmm. Because what he does is like, he, he doesn't even initially know this stuff. He just does all the research and the legwork ahead of time. And he really tries to dive in. And this is really good because this is exactly how you and I would struggle and learn at first too. And so he applies just all of the experiences he's had learning into his courses. So it's more like, like a peer teacher rather than a I know everything and I know more than you, teacher, which is really, really excellent. So, shout out to West Boss. This looks good. Okay. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Um,. Fits. Oh. I'll just do a Ah, how the fit works. It's really weird, but okay. That's actually pretty cool. You selected everything. <laughs> Just ignore me. Back. Let's do. Um, Okay. Yeah, so right now I'm just adding some stuff to the left hand side just so it doesn't look so empty. You know? I'm with you. Yeah, so I'm using this fancy CSS grid thing called auto, or not autofill. I'm actually not doing that. But I'm using repeat, <laughs> you know, just to force myself to try something new. So, which it's actually turning out to be really fun. So, let's see. Okay, so that UI section. Um, that UI item font size, we'll just do 75%. And, and that UI list, yeah, definitely going to get into the CSS grid stuff. That padding zero. I really wish that this. Um, the list dial type was none by default. So I, I understand why it's not, but yeah. 
it, it sort of messes up things. Or it, it doesn't mess up things, it just requires you to do more legwork in order to uh, you know, in order to make everything look nice. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit annoying. Jeez, why, why can I not center, David? Wait, what? That's my problem. What did I do? <laughs> uh, nothing. You did nothing. Oh, that's what it is. It's those. What are you doing right now? Uh, being foolish, David. Oh, yeah. I mean, I figured that that was what this entire thing was about. <laughs> Us being foolish and people somehow watching our stream because they enjoy watching us being foolish um, and doing foolish things. So, yes. thank yeah. you for joining us and <laughs> and uh, and witnessing our foolishness. We appreciate it. Okay, text line center, just my content center. All right. Oh, ah, okay. Good gravy. Oh, David, David, David. Oh, what I do this time? Uh, I know I did nothing. something. I am just a fool. You know, the fanciest sites always have a letter spacing of like one pixel. Like it's just the tiniest little detail that somehow makes all the difference. <laughs> so, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out where you're doing the menu transition. Or I guess it's like when... It's, it's, it's... right about the UI layer transition. Oh, okay. Yeah. So UI layer. Uh, well, uh, hold on. So not current. Oh, okay, okay, I see. So by default, yeah, that's a whole default thing I'm talking about. All right. All right, so basically that UI list, we're going to add the list thing there. Actually, no, we're not. When it's not the current one, or actually uh, the menu, what, what class does the menu have again? Visible, yeah, that's right. Uh, visible, and that's going to be our class. So that UI list, transform, translate, I wonder why we didn't do the uh, the whole transform everything thing. <laughs> oh, transition everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's why I meant transition everything. That's such a. Yeah, I, I'm gonna put that in my template from now on. That's such a useful life hack. Or, I guess CSS hack, which CSS is my life, so it is basically a life hack. So that UI list um, transform. Sorry, transition. This form five seconds. Two, pick SCA point five zero point five one. By the way, I use that point five zero point five one cubic SCA absolutely everywhere. It's my favorite one to use. Tight. Yeah, I mean it's it's good. It works. It does the job. Yeah. Uh. Do you have some? Okay. Oops, I meant to do that yeah, section. Those are a little... Depending on your screen size, it's not exactly responsive, but. Oh, what for the uh, for my little section thingies? Yeah. Ooh. Um. So that we could we could remedy with grid using uh not CSS. I just heard a cat, but. <laughs> Right now I'm doing repeat and three. But if I change that to auto fit, but... sorry, maybe auto fill. That work? I don't know. It, it was one of those auto fit or oh yeah. Oh oh auto uh, two. Yeah, that's, that's doing something. Okay, so. All right, I forget what the second value for auto fill means. Um, all right, but let's find out. 
If the grid container, oh my God, that is such a large amount of text. <laughs> so autofill, I need to, geez, be the same as autofill. Okay. Sometimes, you know, the docs aren't really the best. Uh, <laughs> because it goes into this whole technical jargon and uh yeah but uh for credit to the mdn web docs it does have some helpful articles so yeah there's a distinction between like the technical details that they present and also uh some of the articles so right now i'm reading this article called auto placement in css grid layout and it digests what uh you know what this like repeats thing and this auto i guess yeah it does auto auto fill auto fit uh thing is supposed to do uh oh you know what maybe it's grid auto rows grid oh. auto rows <laughs> whoa uh, so ui left uh where where are you doing this layout you can't all right so I can't follow fit. you. Where where are you? What line? Um, so I, I'm actually in my browser. I don't know which line I'm in. <laughs> okay. Um, you left. Display. Okay. You know what? Let's try this. I'm going to copy and paste something and learn trial by fire over here. Don't use flexbox. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. We're better than my that. Content space between. And David, check it out. We have. Oh wait, that's not working. Man, you tricked me into thinking it was working <laughs> by using a. All right, grid template columns. Repeat auto fit, min max. You know what? It might be because of the header. So, you know, here's what we're gonna do, uh, <laughs> just to bring this to a close. I'm going to repeat by two. We're going to have columns of two. Okay. And that's that. <laughs> and why don't we just drop off, drop that third one? Um, Which third one? Or the, the last the last one. And just make oh, yeah. So just nix it from the uh, HTML. Yeah. yeah. OK, not, that works. You know what? That works. Perfectly to the design. So. No. Yeah, definitely some creative uh, freedom here. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, I am satisfied yeah. with this. I think we're at a at a decent spot. Is it is it that time, David? It's that time. Now is the part of the show where we move into key flexions. A quick review of the techniques we use to uh, build this animation. Uh, so, if you have any questions, now is a great time to ask in the chat, and we'll try and uh, break down those concepts even further. Um, yeah, and remember, if you've enjoyed watching us so far, you can follow and subscribe here on Twitch, YouTube, or pledge at patreon.com slash keyframers, and we will give you a special shout out. We will even make confetti just for you. Yeah, and did you know, if you if you have uh, Amazon Prime, you actually have a Twitch Prime subscription because Twitch is owned by Amazon now. So you can use that Twitch Prime subscription right here on Keyframers up, up at the top. There's a little subscribe button and select Twitch Prime. That's no cost to you, but it directly supports our channel and helps us uh, keep going. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, definitely uh, subscribe to us and uh, keep watching because that, that helps us as well. Um, but let's go. Let's go back at, and look at the uh, the original animation here. I'll paste it in the chat for anyone who's just now joining us. Um, this is uh, Dubik Studio Architecture Firm by Ernest Asanov. Sure, uh, and <laughs> it's just a, a simple, clean, minimal site design uh, with some beautiful little animations. Um, and so we've recreated that here uh, using uh, a fair bit of fair bit of JavaScript, but yeah. uh, most of the I, animation is all uh, CSS based. I totally thought that we wouldn't use JavaScript, but I was wrong. Sorry. Uh, it just it makes it makes more sense to to do it uh, JavaScript here. 
Uh, okay, so what what should we cover first? Um, let's cover. Oh, there's a lot to cover, but let's let's talk about your splitting. Thing. Yeah. Uh, hold on one second, actually. Okay, and this isn't updating. Interesting. Oh, I did this in the wrong place. Sorry. All right. I'm trying to remember the adjectives we use. In fact, you know what? We're going to choose our own adjectives. We're going to be animated. Uh, movement uh keyframes just nice long words <laughs> uh, um oh you're changing out titles okay yep all right uh so bef before we get too deep into splitting let's just look at the um at the javascript here we've got uh the menu button um that when we click it it toggles our open menu um, we'll cover the animation in a little bit um, and then we have some um some code down here to loop through the articles uh, and apply uh, classes um, to the to the current one and remove the class from the previously selected current one uh, it's it's all relatively um, relatively uh, ordinary um, JavaScript here nothing nothing too crazy um, but if you have any questions on that let us know um, and so Going from there, uh, whenever we are changing the um, the slide or toggling the menu, we get that nice text animation where the characters are kind of uh, compressing together in the article and expanding out, or um, coming from expanded and compressing in. Uh, to do that, we're using a library that I've written called Splitting that actually takes apart these um, these words and phrases and gives you a ton of spans here. Um, so let's see, can't quite see it because it's all overlapping, but you can, you can see um, in the DOM here, you've got individual spans for each character. And in each of those, you have a char index, which indicates uh, the, the number uh, that the letter is. Um, in, in the order of the word. So we can use that uh, to do that neat text animation with, with transform. Um, you could do this with uh, letter spacing or something like that if you, if you really hated um, the CPU. But uh, instead, with splitting, we can use transform. So here's our menu transition. Um, we've got the opacity transition, which is pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and then uh, the UI heading chars. We also have opacity zero, but they're uh, trans transformed uh, translate X over uh, 1M plus 0.25 Ms for the, the char index value. So the, uh, the further into the word it is, uh, the further away it's gonna be translated. So that is uh, how we get them all spaced out. And then when it is visible, they're just translate x zero. So with a simple transition, those go in and out. Um, and the, a similar kind of deal with the, uh, with the headings down here. Hey, thanks for following Peak. Um, we have uh, the the characters, uh, instead of spread out, they're just compressed with negative 1m plus negative 0.25m for each char index so that they squeeze together instead. And uh, would you like to talk about your lovely menu animation? Uh, which one, the top right one or the full menu? Uh, the, the top right one. Oh, OK. So yeah, this is an interesting one where we're actually using um, some 3D CSS transforms. So as always, you have to, um, you have to add those uh, prerequisite transform style preserve 3D in order to, I don't know, it tells the browser to do something. It's sort of like putting paint primer on your wall. I don't exactly know why you do it, but you have to do it. 
to prime the wall. Like, yeah, oh, to prime the wall, yeah, of course. So you're basically priming the environments to preserve 3D. Well, basically, if you don't have this, it doesn't work. So just transform style, preserve 3D, memorize that. Also memorize perspective. Uh, you know, that could vary, you know, just have 100 pixels, 1,000 pixels, just something easy to remember. Um, yeah. And so um, this is just a simple, or actually it's not really simple, but it's a transform where, uh, or a transition between two transforms. And we're, <laughs> we're transforming quite a few properties here. Um, first is the translate Y. So both of these uh, two lines, they're going to move to the center. And so that's that translate Y 150%. Uh, now when it does that, we're rotating it um, on the Z axis, which is like, if you imagine like a 3D three lines, X, Y, Z, the Z axis is coming right at you. So we're rotating that negative 45 degrees for the top one, 45 degrees for the bottom one, just so that it makes that X shape. At the same time, we're also rotating it uh, on the Y axis. And so that's going to give that um, the really cool uh, spinny effect. And actually, I just changed it from negative 180 to 180 so that it looks like it's coming in the same way. And then on the after one, because we shrunk it a little, we're going to unshrink it and give it a scale X of one. And so the effect is it does a 3D uh, turning into an X. Whoa, <laughs> what did you do? This is like perspective <laughs> madness yeah. over here. Uh the the lower the perspective is the more extreme the um the animation becomes all right uh, so let's see 1000 i right. think 1000 so, is more of a tame one right the higher the perspective the um the more mundane it feels um so if you really want something to feel like it's coming out the screen um you give it a low a low perspective um so here like around 40 pics that actually feels Kind of nice. Um, 30 picks is definitely too low. Um, but then 50 picks. Yeah. How, do, how yeah. do you feel about 50 picks? All right, fine. <laughs> we, we can do that. And it's nice because this entire design is flat. And so you have this little 3D thing. It's just a very exciting thing. It's very eye catching. And that's important because when you go to the menu, you want your user to know how they could exit. Now, obviously, there's an X there. But the fact that it visually transforms into an X lets the user know the same button that you use to open the menu can also be used to close the menu. And so that's uh, one of the reasons that you know animation is helpful. Right. And so yeah, we're just using JavaScript to toggle a class between those two uh, transforms. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then with your uh, UI menu, the the kind of left side animation what what did you do there um to to have that staggering uh for the for the child items the the uh ul's oh uh, i mean they're not staggering oh they're, they're not just, oh uh, yeah they're they're just they're they are coming in at the same time okay yeah anyway. yeah so yeah it's just a simple translate uh animation yeah you know or not an animation, it's a transition. So it's translating 50%, I believe. Yeah, 50% uh, to the right uh, when it's not active, and then it comes into its normal position when it is. Yeah, and we have the same header or heading animation with the letters happening as well. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I dig it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we also have the image, uh, the image transform, like when you go from image to image or screen to screen, how they slide left, right. Uh, this we talked about in previous episodes. So we're just using selectors to, um, to basically say that any images, like, all right, so like just the baseline is all images should translate to the left. Like that's the that's the defaults, right? I, yeah, or, so or something like that. For, first of all, we size the images up so that they are uh, more than a hundred percent width, uh, which took us way longer than than it should have yeah. um, to debug. 
but we got there and then uh, so yeah default state here on 285 is translate X negative 10% right so it's starting off on the on the left Yep, and so that's all of them. But the reason we're doing all of them is because you can't really target like a previous sibling. You could target a next sibling or any further adjacent siblings. Uh, so we're targeting the previous sibling here, and that's why we're doing that. Now, the current one, that's going to get a transform of zero because we want it right in the center. And then the one directly after, that's the one we're going to target uh, or transform to the right. So, and then you know, once it becomes current, it's going from the right into the center. Yes. And I simplified your code a little bit. You had you had an adjacent sibling selector and then the uh, the all following sibling selector. What is that? I just like living life on the edge. Uh, I like obfuscating my code. It prevents <laughs> hackers from stealing it. Hence the not uh, currents. Um, yeah, <laughs> and and we just have some other simple um, translate animations. Um, so when it's not the current animation, everything's you know pushed down, or, or we have that you know letter animation happening there, and then a simple transition on the class change triggers that uh, beautiful looking animation. Yep, and yeah, that's pretty much everything. Yeah. And of course, all the JavaScript too. <laughs> uh, yeah, all that JavaScript. Goodness. Uh, yeah. Uh, anything else uh, you wanted to cover on this one? Uh, no, I think that's all. Yeah. Uh, if if you have any questions, uh, last last call. Um, I'm just gonna <laughs> click through the animation uh, one more time, or we can use our arrow keys to navigate because David set that up. Got our beautiful menu transition here. Again, using um, using splitting for the, the text effects there. Um, look out for a full release uh, with a, a slightly modified API coming soon. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's all. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's yep. call it here. Mm -hmm. You uh, you hear that beautiful music, David? I don't hear it at all. Well, but that's okay. Everybody else can, and that's the important <laughs> part. Uh, you've been watching Keyframers, yeah. the animated collaborative coding live stream, where we bring imaginative user interfaces to life. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode and would like to see more from Dave and I, there are many ways you can support us. Uh, you can subscribe and participate in the live streams here on Twitch uh, every week at twitch.tv slash keyframers. You can like and subscribe at youtube.com slash keyframers or uh, tweet at us and spread the word at twitter.com slash keyframers or uh, pledge your support at patreon.com slash keyframers to keep us going on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. And so we do accept submissions for future episodes and we actually did have a submission that we might do next time. Yes. Uh, it's a very scrolly, fun scrolly based animation. So um, that's going to be a lot of fun because we're going to be highlighting another tiny library. We love our tiny libraries. So yeah, tweet at Keyframers with any animations you'd like to see made. And of course, you could also present questions or challenges to us that we have done. And we do answer all the questions on the air. Uh, and we try to be right. Yeah, uh, no, no guarantees though. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And uh, hasta luego, amigos. Adios.